Two silver trumpets. Silver always in the scripture speaks of redemption. Gold speaks of deity. And precious stones speak of the, the, the Holy Spirit. So gold represents deity, God the Father. Silver represents the redemption of Christ. And precious stones represent or symbolic of the gifts of the Spirit. He says, make silver trumpets and you shall use them for the calling of the congregation and for directing the movement of the camp. Verse 3, when, when they blow both of them, all the congregation, everybody say all. All. All the congregation shall gather together before you at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. If they blow only one, then the leaders, the heads of the divisions uh, of Israel shall gather to you. So if you blow both trumpets, all the congregation assemble. If you blow one trumpet, only the leaders are to assemble. Look down at verse 8. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets, and these shall be to you as an ordinance forever throughout your generation. When you go to war in your land against the enemy who oppress you, then you shall Sound an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered before the Lord your God, and you will be saved from your enemies. If you blow this trumpet, when you go to war, God will hear the sound of the trumpet, and he says you will be saved, delivered from your enemies. And it makes me think about all through the Old Testament, the Bible says, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm on my holy mountain. And what your, what your trumpet, our trumpet today is, Lifting up our voice unto God and letting the word of God come out of us, making the sound of the trumpet. Either we're going into war or else God is calling a solemn assembly. Then he says in verse 10, also in the day of your gladness, not only in the time of war, but in the day of your gladness, your appointed feast. And at the beginning of your months, you shall blow the trumpet over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings. And they shall be a memorial to you before your God. I am Yahweh your God. Blow a trumpet before your feast. Blow a trumpet in the time of celebration. Blow a trumpet when you bring your offering. What is that for us? Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Praise and worship him. Uh, uh, praise him with the instruments. Praise him with the music. Praise him. He says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Your breath, your praise becomes your trumpet that you lift up to God. And you should do it when you offer offerings. You should do it when you're glad. You should do it when you're in warfare. When you're going into battle and intercession. Lift up your voice and blow the trumpet in Zion. When you're assembling, when you're coming together in the holy assembly, when you're responding to the assembly, if the preacher of the assembly, and that's what the word ecclesiastics means, the preacher of the assembly, if your preacher calls for a, a holy convocation or the coming together, everybody should be present and accountable for all because you heard the sound of the trumpet. God's got something he wants to say to the church. Look at verse 11. Now it came to pass on the 20th day of the month in the second year that the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle of the testimony. Something is getting ready to happen. The, the cloud is lifted up from the testimony, uh, from, the, from the tabernacle of the testimony. And verse 12, and the children of Israel set out from the wilderness of Sinai on their journeys. Then the cloud settled down in the wilderness of Paran. So the cloud moved, and when the cloud moved, the people moved. And when the cloud settled down, what did the people do? They settled down. But we're going to read a little bit this morning. They didn't have that much sense. One time the cloud didn't move, and they did. And it was, it was a shame what happened. But look at verse, uh, uh, before we read verse 10, I want to, uh, before we go any further, I just want to read what settle down means. It's shakan. Strong uh, 7931. It means to abide, to dwell, to abide, to remain, to stay, to tabernacle. So the cloud uh, dwelt, remained, and tabernacled in verse 12 in the wilderness of Sinai. The cloud settled down. This word shikan settled down as you read through the rest of this, and I'm not going to read all this word well, but it also, we get the word shekinah. Shekinah is uh, the abiding presence of Almighty God. Sometimes the Shekinah appears in a visible way not found in Scripture. Shekinah comes to us from Judaic writings. Verse 13 says, So they started out from the first time according, for the first time according to the command of the Lord by the hand of Moses. 
the standard of the camp of the children of Israel, Judah set out first according to their army. So Judah went first. The tribe of Judah, the tribe of praise, and our Lord came from the tribe of Judah. They went out first. What are they, what are they doing? They're moving in sync with the, with the divine order of God. Nobody broke rank. They moved in the divine order because as the cloud moved, they moved. But they didn't just get out ahead of the leaders. Praise went first. Out, went out of, up ahead of them. And the Lord, as you know, destroyed their enemies many times. As we get over the Old Testament, you'll see that as Judah went first, praise went first, and the Lord would confound the enemy. Uh, let's read over in verse 29. Now Moses said uh, to uh, Hobad, now we're going to, we, we, I really want you to pay attention to this. Hobad is also uh, Jethro. If you look in your center, you will see that in verse 29. Moses said to Hobad or Jethro, the son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out for this place, for the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us and we will treat you well. For the Lord has promised good things to Israel. And he said to him, this is what Jethro said, I will not go, but I will depart to my own land and to my relatives. And as you know, Jethro was, was the the... the, the Moses' father-in-law, he was a black man, a priest of Midian, and he says, I will not go, I'm going to go to my own relatives. Look at verse 39, and Moses said, please do not leave, inasmuch as you know how we, verse 31, I'm sorry, please do not leave, inasmuch as you know how we are to camp in the wilderness. And you can be our eyes. He says, you're familiar with the wilderness, Jethro. And you can be our eyes. You can actually see through the wilderness. You're familiar with this area, this, this, this part of the desert. And so we want you to go with us and direct us. You can be our eyes uh, for us. And then he, uh, he goes on to say uh, in verse uh, 32, and it shall be if you will go with us. Indeed, it shall be that whatever good the Lord will do for us, the same we will do to you. So they departed from the mountain of the Lord in a journey of three days. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord went before them for the three days journey to search out a resting place for them. And the cloud of the Lord was above them by day when they went out from the camp. So it was whenever the ark set out, that Moses said, rise up, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Let those who hate you flee before you. And when it, the ark rested, he said, return, O Lord, to the many thousands of Israel. When the ark rose up and went before them, Lord said, the Moses said, arise, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered. I mean, the presence, the Shekinah of God was on the move. And Moses declared, let your enemies be scattered. But then when it settled down, he says, return. O oh Lord, that to the many thousands of Israel, and the Shekinah would settle down for whatever period of time. And when it settled down, they had to, they needed to settle down if they were wise. Uh, we get over into chapter 11, and we get over to the complaining of the people. The complaints against God is judged immediately as the Lord's anger produces fire at the edge of the camp. Uh, they also began to crave for me in this chapter. In chapter 11, the people complained. Now, when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. Then the people cried to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. They complained, the fire, you know, last week we were talking about the fire of God, and I'm, I, all of those saying we want the fire of God. When the fire came, it, it burned among them and consumed some in the outskirts of the camp. But they cried to Moses, Moses prayed, the fire was quenched. So he, Moses, called the name of the place Tebron. Because the fire of God had burned among them. And that name literally means a breaking out of the fire. The place where the fire of God broke out. Look at verse 4. Now the mixed multitude who were among them yielded to intense craving. They seen so many miracles. But the mixed multitude. And down in your notes. If you look down in your notes at verse 11 and 4. It says mixed multitude refers either to non-Israelites who joined them in the camp. At, Exodus, at the Exodus, or to Israelite riffraff 
Those governed by sensual appetite. 